Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I'm going to make high resolution model from our previous blocking model, as well as putting texture on them. We will be covering modeling, UV in Maya, and texturing in Substance Painter. Let's get into it. I have my block scene open and I'm going to export the wood plate geometry. Then import it into a whole new scene like we always do. We can simply start from deforming this low resolution mesh instead of creating a new one. Here I'm deleting the middle surface and creating a separated mesh for the bottom. Then separate them into three pieces. Here I made the wrong count in the process where the reference was formed by four pieces but I only did three. It was fine, not a big deal. Now I'm creating the woods around the corner. Create a simple cube and rotate it. Place it to the corner. It is fine to clip the geometry. I'm going to boolean it, leave us the simple triangle shape, duplicate them and place them to all four corners. Then I'm deleting the inner face since it is not visible to the final result. Now I'm happy with the shape and I'm going to bevel all the edges, making it look high resolution. Then we are going to UV it. There are really no tricks in these steps. Simply cut and unfold them and place them nicely into the tile like what I'm doing in the video. Then we can head into Substance Painter. In Substance Painter, this time we are going to make world space normal, ambient occlusion, curvature and position in 4K size. We don't do this in the previous videos because they are simple objects and don't really need to rely on bigger maps. But for this wood plate here, since those wood are stick together for many many years, it should have some occluded details around the corners. Anyway, there's a lot of benefits we can use from Bigot Map in this case. I first start with the presets wood material from Substance Painter and play with the parameters to get the color and size I want. We can see that the wood direction doesn't really tally between side and the bottom pieces. So I'm going to duplicate the material and change the direction to match both of them. You can see I named them H and V, which stand for horizontal and vertical directions. Separating them can be troublesome because when you make changes, you are going to have to do the same for the other one. Otherwise, they will look different. If you plan your UV right at the first place, then you can skip this. Next up would be scratches. It is the same old tricks. Create a new material, check only height and set it to negative value. Check only height and set it to negative value. Assign a black mask and fill it with grunt scratches textures. In this case, you can add in a lower roughness and overlay color in the scratch layer to increase the realistic look. Here we can add black dirty dust around the occluded area. Create a new layer and name it dirts. Uncheck metal and normal, set it to black color. Add a dirt generator to the mask. What this will do is that the generator will sample information from the bacon map and locate the occluded area. Means that we don't need to locate and paint them manually. You can add multiple layers of dirt if you like to. For me, I'm adding another tighter dirt which only appears in the very tight corner areas. Next, I'm adding roughness variation and I'm going to use the generator dirt again. 
But this time we are going to check the invert option in the generator, which means we want a reverse effect of the generator. This quickly helps us to locate unoccluded areas. I'm adding brighter color to those areas, also a lower roughness. Always remember to check your roughness from a shallow angle. You can see I do that a lot in the video. Never ever look straight down to your material. You will always make wrong judgment. Then what I'm going to do now is to adjust every single layer to improve the accuracy. And I thought it should be nicer to add more bumps. I will be continuing to further enhance everything. Make sure all of them look good from different lighting, angle and distance. Don't worry, what I'm going to do after this video is exactly the same. It is a repeating process to enrich every channel. No big changes or magic trick will be made. Last step in this tutorial is to save your file. We will be discussing how to export this to Maya in the 9th lesson. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.